I heard a rumor that they're going to make everybody tape a, a, a speech in case they win, which feels like a particular kind of torture. <laughs> I was in bed. Um, you kind of know, you know, when they're coming out and if people are saying you might be up for one and you try to ignore it. Um, and I've been doing this so long that it used to be that you would hear it like five in the morning. And if you don't hear, then, then you know you, you weren't. Um, and I kind of woke up, I think at like, I think it was like 8 o'clock, and I was like, oh, I, you know, I guess that didn't happen. Uh, and then very soon after, I started getting texts. So, I mean, the most important nomination uh, truly is for the show, uh, because everybody, you know, is working toward that. So that was the biggest thing to celebrate. Uh, my wife, Amy, I'm sure, will be here. Um, at least one of my children will be here, and I'll drag her into it. Um, but I, don't, I, I really don't know yet what the setup is, is, is going to be, or, or do we zoom it? I have a tux. Uh, I don't I, I don't know what the rules are gonna be I'm sort of waiting to hear um, what they're gonna say I'm sure I, I'm close to being the kind of person who would want to not wear a tux and do something a little weirder but I don't know if I'm quite that person but I know there's got to be some people who will do and the Emmy goes to Bradley, Bradley Whitford. Whitford. By the way, that is an example of how unfair award shows are. And, and I'll, I'll explain this because I was obviously happy, happy to win, but that was a situation where when I went into The Handmaid's Tale, I could tell, because shows do this, that they're trying out, not necessarily you, but the character. And so I came in, so I was technically a guest actor uh, when that was on. By the time the Emmys came around, I had become a regular on the show, and I think it was terrifically unfair to the, to the other nominees because I get to flesh out this, truly one of the most fascinating characters I've ever played, and that is out there. and there, you know, the people who are voting are seeing sort of the full fruition of this as compared to regular guest shots where you don't get the chance to flesh that out. But I took it. Handmaid's Tale, the cast is very close and communicative, largely because of Lizzie Moss, who, it, I hope it's not ungracious to say, it really upsets me that, that she didn't get nominated because I, I think she's doing the performance of the generation and on top of that is the creative center of the show in a way I have never seen uh, any actor, executive producer be. She is fully involved in every cut, every script, and every And as I think about it, uh, you know, the reason we're communicating is because she reaches out and wants us uh, to communicate. She immediately wanted to set up a fund to make sure uh, that we could support our, our crew uh, when we didn't know what was happening. Very few uh, actor producers think about other people. <laughs> um, uh, and we've had very interesting discussions not only about the pandemic but in the wake of the George Floyd uh, Killing. Uh, we had some really interesting discussions um, about uh, kind of fundamental changes that we realized in that particular workplace 
uh, some of us were blind to and, and, and really, you know, wanted to address. So we've, we've stayed connected. And, you know, just yesterday, you know, there's an email from Lizzie. She's directing for the first time. She was, um, and she is so ready. And we, we, we shot like a day of her episode and then everything shut down. But it, it was her reaching out and saying, uh, you know, we're going back, uh, you know, come to me with any script issues. Um, so she's always making sure that we're in some sort of community.